All right. So thank you, Jocelyn Segovia, for coming to talk to us today about her fascinating, your fascinating career. I was telling you just before we started recording, this was always a dream of mine. Um, the work that you do when I was first getting into linguistics, this is what I thought. Um, if I had a dream job, it would be um, working with, you know, dialect coaching for, for actors. So tell me what it's like. What is it? What is it? What is the day to day? What is it? What does it look like at the on the ground? Well, it's really fun. I think um, it's a really fun job for linguists because you get to do a lot of linguistics and um it's hard to say what it's like uh so i guess i can break it up um i'm going to talk right now about specifically in a tv show because it's different that i also did dialect coaching for um uh talent for a voice assistant but mm -hmm. it was different and i can talk about that too but for a tv show uh the way it worked for me is that i would get a script and then uh, sometimes it was translated in Spanish. Sometimes it wasn't and they wanted my translation. So if they did, then, you know, I would get it beforehand and then I would uh, do some translation. Um, something that I think it was fun for me being a, a fan for, of the show, it was uh, Better Call Saul. I was a huge fan of Breaking Bad. I live in Albuquerque, so yeah. I'm very connected to, to that. So it was just very exciting for me. So I actually did... A little bit of character uh, research beforehand. I wondered. Yeah, there been a lot of research done on Albuquerque, like the the features of an Albuquerque variety. Um, I I there's been some in the university that I did my uh, oh, cool. degree at, at UNM. Um, but I don't know. It was a little hard for me. So I worked on season six. So it was a little hard for me to come in and just. Yeah, you change. can't change. You don't. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to be very conscious of not only Better Call Saul, but then a, an actor that I worked a lot with was uh, Giancarlo Esposito for Gus Spring. He's in Breaking Bad. So his character has been kind of established for now, what, yeah. 10 years or something. So, um yeah, I couldn't do any major changes. So for some actors, I focused on helping them have more of a native or, or, or sound more fluent other than just really going into a regional dialect. And then, you know, all of a sudden they have this dialect that they didn't have in in the future. <laughs> in <Breaking Yeah>. Bad. <laughs> yeah, so I guess um, uh, I would get the script. I would translate whenever I had to. Um, I, the production would let me know if a person was going to come on set that was going to speak Spanish. So I had to be on set. That was my major, um, my big job. It was to be on set when Spanish was being filmed. Uh, some of the directors or producers don't uh, speak Spanish. So I also kind of interpreted when uh, oh, actors cool. maybe improvised, say something mm -hmm. else. So then I would say, they said this is this okay Does if it wasn't I would go character. Run. yeah <laughs> yeah I would run and tell the the actor you know I, they don't want you to say this or maybe they're changing a line or things like that so it was very very fast paced uh, um so during set uh when I was on set it was that I was kind of like the link between uh the director and the actors and sometimes sound uh department and you know all of the props sometimes if they had something written um, there were times when there really wasn't that much dialogue, but they wanted me there because I've lived in Mexico. So kind of keep an eye on cultural things, spelling, things like that. So it was, um, a lot of, would you um, call that localization in this context? I think so. When it was, um, specific, specifically to Mexico, mm -hmm. um, I did do a lot of one of the actors is uh, from Mexico City, so our Spanish is different, but then his character is supposed to be based here. So sometimes what he would call something, I would say it's another thing for me. So then we would kind of have a discussion about, um, so I would say maybe that's more um, localization, yes. Um, the most fun parts for me were yeah. actors that don't uh, speak Spanish. 
adults and they have a major speaking Spanish role. So then I would have one-on-one -on -one, uh, mm -hmm. sessions for pronunciation. Um, and I know you have to, you can't get into all your proprietary methodology, but is there some kind of connection that you can make between your, you know, your, your linguistic training and the coaching that you do? There is, yeah. Um, so all of this, I had never done this before. When I started on the show, this was the first time that I did it. Um, so it was kind of like things that just happened, you know, that kicked in when it was happening. So the first thing that I noticed that I was doing as a linguist was that the first time that I met one actor, um, I had them just read the lines that were due for that day, let's say um, a page. And I started marking um, things that I thought I needed to fix or to modify. Um, and then I thought, oh, you know, their, their sound patterns, their, their patterns when they're things that need to be changed. So then I actually grouped things like diphthongs. Yeah. Um, and so it was a little bit hard to, you know, you, you're not talking to a linguist, you're talking to an actor. So it was kind of like, I'm not ever going to say, do this diphthong. Yeah. Diphthong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would just group things and, and you know, they got it. Um, I, I focused a lot on stress patterns. I think with actors that had a English as a first language tend to do certain stress patterns for mm. words in Spanish. So then um, I did that. There were a lot of commonalities, I think, from people with actors that did have Span uh, English as, as their first language. And for example, there was another actor that knew or was familiar with French. I think he speaks French. Huh. Um, so the things I had to modify were a little different. Yeah. They were better at other phonemes that than the other people. So I think I did that um, as a linguist. I used a lot of phonetics, um, depending on how deep I, or how many lines they had. There's some speeches that are very long. Then I started to get a little bit into the IPA. Uh, and some actors really took on to that. Others didn't. And then we just changed the methods. Because some actors study IPA. I've heard, I've talked to actors who've, who've had that in acting classes. Oh. They, uh, some schools train them that way that's very helpful for them I think when you know when there was an actor that just had one line uh, for a day it really wasn't worth it to get into IPA and, <laughs> and it was just more mer memories right. and I did a lot of um voice notes you know on my phone it was just very easy sometimes when it was one line just like record it send it over and then maybe a couple of days later, I would be like, hey, can you send me, you know, what you've been practicing? And then if there was any tweak that I had to do, because um, that's one challenge that I had, um, not only it was COVID, some actors don't even live here somewhere in California. So I kind of had to work yeah. with the lifestyle. So you mentioned that you do, you've done in film and in TV and in um, coaching a voice it's like a voice user interface kind of a thing that you're coaching. Yeah, um, uh, I like to make the distinction because it was for a voice user interface, but I had nothing to do with the actual design of right. the of the interface. But the um, the actor, one of the actors that I ended up working uh, with, uh, actually needed a Spanish coach for that job. Uh -huh. So they called me and I ended up coaching. And then when I asked, what is this for? Um, it turned out to be um, a voice user interface. And I'm so, so interested in doing uh, voice design that I was like, this cannot be <laughs> happening. <laughs> so is that, that's a broader interest for you. If we take a step back, kind of voice design is the, is the bigger, bigger bucket? I, I think so. Um, my background uh, is actually my, my BA was on filmmaking. So I was in, fil in the film industry uh -huh. for five years, maybe. Uh, not, I was a camera department, so it was very different. Nothing to do with uh, <clears throat> what I'm doing right now. Um, but as a linguist, I do, I did a lot of voice research and, you know, what does your voice, what is it encoding? A lot of like gender identity, um, Cool. emotions things like that so then whenever I discovered uh Vui, I was just so interested in intonation you know and and, and being part of that Did people say Vui. I didn't know that oh Vui. I I've heard it all right 
I learned a new <laughs> word, a new <laughs> acronym. Um, so is that what got you the first, is that what, like having been in the film industry, was that what got you in, in the first place? I think so. Um, yeah, the way that I got this is a, an old friend from film school that I had worked with ended up in Albuquerque as well. But we're both from Mexico, so we had connected over that. So she knew um, I, I was a native speaker of Spanish and also um, that I was studying you know, language and I had film background. So she was like, I think you'd be perfect. Do you want to interview? And then I interviewed. <laughs> So she kind of knew what she needed. Yeah, and she was the one that was doing this job, but um, she ended up moving to LA, still working with the show. Um, but she, so she did, I think season five, she did uh, the Spanish coaching. Okay. Yeah. So I have to believe that people listening to this are all thinking, uh, oh my gosh, how, how could I get into this? Or I guess I just would... Uh, invite you to share any ideas that you would have for someone who's interested in in it could be vui or um dialect coaching yes so um so i think when someone asked me if i thought if you've not been in film you wouldn't be good for this job and i don't think so i i think it is to your benefit to know um the set ethics and if things like that, but I, I do not think you should be scared if you've never been in film to go here because I think linguists are such great people for this for this job. Uh, my, advice, to hear. <laughs> my advice would be, um, I really think it would be good, I'm assuming it's a person that likes dialects or you know languages a lot, so you already kind of know and listen to a lot of other dialects, so maybe make um a plan start making like a plan of how you would coach something maybe even like with your partner or with a, a friend um but something that I really wanted to do when I was thinking about pursuing this uh full-time would be just emailing casting agencies um the people that that have all these actors that they sent out to auditions and just say you know if it's Spanish hey um I'm a Spanish uh dialect coach you know, if you're a linguist, I, I can say you, you're, <laughs> you're a dialect coach already, or you can be, so I would say, you know, I'm yeah. a dialect coach, I'm, I'm doing this, uh, please send my information if you need anyone, uh, because something that happens here in New Mexico is that people, some actors have the look that a person wants for a Spanish speaking character, and they don't necessarily speak Spanish. Mm -hmm but they could audition. So um, I would say casting agencies would be really good. Or if you know uh, someone that would like to work on, on an accent, you need know, to start teaching them. Uh, something that I would have done uh, if I had known uh -huh. what I know now, <laughs> I probably would have prepared um, a couple of sessions and then also have in mind, um, like if I was doing this and just with an actor, maybe they don't have the budget necessarily that, you know, a big TV show has or a big um, company like, like for, you know, for the buoy that, that I helped with. So maybe I just kind of um, do some research on the rates uh, that you would do um, hourly. I think it's really good to do. Mm. And maybe give them some ideas for resources that they could, if they want to look further, but, you know, like you say, not over, it's because it is, it's, you've got to, you've got to charge, you've got to charge what you're worth. It takes time. It's, it's expensive. It's yeah. worth it. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, not knowing how um, maybe a, a film set works could also um, not help you a lot. So I would say if you are working in something um, like a set that it's a lot of hours, um, I would say to get a minimum, um, for example, if you go and you work 30 minutes, you wouldn't want to be paid half of your rate. Mm -hmm. but, you know, say maybe my contract is if I go out, um, I get a minimum of four hours. And if it goes to five, if it goes to 12, you know, because they're long hours for, for being on set, then you have that money. But if you go for 30 minutes, you didn't drive out to a set for an hour and then back and then just got 
you know, twenty dollars or whatever. Well, that's good insider knowledge. <laughs> well, anything else that any last thoughts or ideas to share with the you know career linguist community? These are people who are just um, out there doing great things, but you know, inspired to hear about other exciting, great things. Any parting words for our community? <laughs> yes, I, I would say um, to just try things, you know, to not be afraid. I was very afraid when they called me and I thought, and I was on that big set and I was like, oh my God, can I do this? And I, I did, I think I actually did a, a really good job. And I think any other of my linguist friends would have done a really great job yeah. there. I think I would say just trust yourself and go out and do it. Oh, and wow. also it can be discouraging sometimes when you have this wild dream, like you were saying, like, oh, I want to be a dialect coach. And people tend to be discouraging sometimes, you know, just be realistic. Like this I think that people. that's helpful, right? Yeah. You and enough me, reminders to be pragmatic. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good to just have it there and kind of explore things because I mm. never thought I would go back to film and it's a passion that I had. And it just reconnected with, with linguistics. Like when I never thought that was possible. And then it ended up happening. And I think because I never really abandoned that love that I have for film. So just trust yourself and keep exploring things that you like and try out things. That would be my my advice for everyone. I love it. Thank <laughs> you so much, Jocelyn. Thank you. Uh, and oh, if people want to learn more, is there a place where they can learn more about you or your work or? Uh, yes, I, um, at the moment I have LinkedIn. I think okay. I don't have a website at the moment, but anyone can reach me um, on LinkedIn and I would be happy to talk to anyone that's interested in it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And say that you found her at the career campfire conversations. <laughs> yes. <laughs>